for the Lord Jesus, a wonderful round of applause. My brethren, today is a day of many blessings, a day for us to listen to the word of God, which will make us stand and for us to know that he is the Lord, that he is our God. And our God is not, he's not a mythological character fabricated by religion or by any human. Our God is the creator of the heavens and of the earth. And since he is our God, he wants to protect us and set us free. He wants to do complete work in us, and he considers us as the sheep of his pasture. So we can be certain that this word will feed us, will give us the sustenance that we need, and then afterwards we will be able to assume what belongs to us by right. We will certainly be very blessed. In our previous service, I talked about Joseph of Egypt, but I still have a lot of things to talk about, Joseph, but I want to speak another sermon beginning with John chapter 5, uh, 657, which is very important for us. The message of Joseph I didn't say in the program at Bungie, only at Hichi and Hejitevi. But here in John uh, chapter 6, verse number 57, the, the Lord Jesus is speaking. These words came directly from the lips of the Master himself. And he said the following. This is a passage that we must understand. As the living Father sent me, and I live because of the Father, so he who feeds on me will live because of me. It's not enough just to listen to a passage like this. No, we must understand. This passage is orientations that God is giving us. And if we follow his guidance, we will please the Lord and we will open up our lives so that he may operate in them. So Jesus said here, as the living Father sent me, my brethren, the Lord never stops acting or moving 24 hours a day, seven days a week. In all times, in every day, all of them, the Lord is blessing us at whatever moment that we may have any problem or any difficult situation. We only need to cry out to him to to, to his power to operate so that the Lord may come down upon our lives, pour down his grace, and at that moment, we can be set free from evil. There isn't a particular moment for this to happen, but when the entire church is congregated, it is better because then our faith also flourishes. But it doesn't matter where you may be, even if it's in the desert of Sahara by yourself, only with sand to the right and to the left and nothing else. And if you are in need of a blessing, at that moment, you can invoke the power of God and you will no longer be by yourself anymore. He will be beside you, operating and acting in our favor. So Jesus said, as the living Father sent me and operates through me interruptedly and is always blessing people, the living Father sent me. He was sent by the Father. I live because of the Father. He believed in these words. Right after the moment when we accept Jesus, we also have a godly mission to fulfill. So what must we do then? The Lord God lives and Jesus lives. It says it right here. I live because of the Father. So we must also live. This should be the trust in our hearts. But Dr. Suarez, it isn't working. Sometimes there is an evil oppression and he is letting you go through that to see how much faith you have. So you must stand firm. Be determined. No, I took possession of the blessing. I am dominating this situation. But how are you dominating it? If you are losing, it's only apparently. The work has already been done. I am determining and demanding in the name of Jesus, and the Father lives in me. So it is through the Father that I'll be victorious. So then, as the living Father sent me, and I live because of the Father, so he who feeds on me will live because of me. And if I feed on Jesus, which is the word of God, he says in the previous verses, he says here that he who feeds on me will live because of me. In the previous verses, in verse number 53, it says the following. Then Jesus said to them, Most assuredly, I say to you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. This is a, this is a comparison. We must take hold of the word and eat it. Eat and digest the word, put it inside of us. The revelation of the word and the life that there is in it, we should put inside us and believe. And if we do so, we will be feeding ourselves of the body of Jesus. And he says right here at the end of verse 57, it is written as follows. So he who feeds on me, this means being fed by Jesus, the word of God, will live because of me. In other words, it's not enough only to confess. 
I am with the Father now, so I will be victorious. No, we must feed ourselves from the Word. What is the Word saying to us here? Do we understand it? Then we must assume it. If we don't understand or assume it, nothing will happen to us. Therefore, at the end of verse 53, he says the following, You have no life in you. And Jesus said at the end of 57, So he who feeds on me will live because of me. We will have life in ourselves, and we will give our lives to Jesus. We are going uh, to live not by ourselves, not according to our capacity, or by our willingness to live and be victorious. We are going to live because of Jesus, and by his capacity, by his will, that we may become a blessing. So God will do this to us. Amen? Now let's go to the real-life drama for today. I went from 12 years to 29 years old, always serving the spirits. He used to come back with the same stress, with the same problems, with, um, with the same anxiety. It was quite a disturbed life, you know. We would enjoy many barbecues, parties at our house, lots of friends. In fact, it was kind of a life that, uh, how can I say this? It was an illusion, you know. I used to work in a large company. And I also worked as well with professional soccer to a very large club here in Sao Paulo, you know. I was one of the official scouts of the team. I received a lot of money and there was no limit to it, you know. He used to give me jewelry, right? On my birthday, on Valentine's Day, we had everything we needed. I had everything except, except God. And then depression took me over. I didn't even want to get dressed to put on makeup because it didn't have any meaning for me. My castle was, it was, it was built here in this place, but it was built upon the sand, you know. Then at that moment, we decided to move from our house, you know. I bought a larger house with more space and under the house there was, there was also a commercial building. And then I decided to leave, to leave the large company where I worked and I also quit working for this soccer club in Sao Paulo. Then I got here and opened the bar, you know, and that was when I lost everything. The debts came, our bills were overdue, and we had many, we had many debts, and we were always in the red. Our debts was so huge that everything we had, we lost, because all that we had became little. What we made was nothing compared to the debt that we owed. I was in such a situation that that, that I was thinking about having drugs to kill myself. Things started to get worse. I saw myself inside my house counting coins so that I could buy bread. But then I began to know who God was. Then I started to watch uh, Dr. Suarez's TV program. Then I met the church, the church of Calleras, where I'm attending until today. I got baptized in the waters here and started to start to serve God. And the Lord God started talking to me and he said that I would go through through difficult moments, very difficult, but I'm going to be with you and you will be victorious. And everything that I had here on my bar, I started selling to pay my debts. Even in a difficult moment, Paulo felt a special calling. Yes, then I, then I became a sponsor. And when we became sponsors through the life of my husband, we also contributed to saving other lives and rescuing them. So when I had access to it, I also thought about the other people that could be going through the same thing as I did. My husband got a job. I began my life again, literally from scratch. I started all over. I started paying my bills. Nowadays, through the faith in his calling, Paulo works in a steel company with a global recognition. Now his name is clean and mine is clean as well. This also happened because of the sponsorship. So I try to contribute always, all the time. And the Lord is always, always here by my side. Complete restitution in my life, in the life of my family. All glory to God. <laughs> now let's go to the question and answer segment. Dr. Suarez, can Christian books replace the reading of the Word? Not even as a joke. Well, I've written a couple of books, 
but they don't even come close to compete with the Bible. The Word of God is the true Word. It is the source of life. The rest is only an orientation that people prepare with written instructions. Second question. Dr. Suarez, is it harmful for a couple when they go to different churches? Well, it shouldn't be this way, right? Since they are husband and wife and they have become one flesh, they should be based on the same faith. But sometimes the doctrines vary. But this is a matter that the couple must decide. So let us turn now to Genesis chapter 49. In the previous service, I was talking about Joseph of Egypt, and there is still a lot to say about it. Genesis 39, let us read verse 1. It reads the following, Now Joseph had been taken down to Egypt, and Potiphar, an officer of Pharaoh, captain of the guard, an Egyptian, bought him from the Ishmaelites who had taken him down there. The Lord was with Joseph, and he was a successful man, and he was in the house of his master, the Egyptian. In the previous service, I spoke a lot about this. The Lord was with Joseph, dear brethren. Someone might ask, how was the Lord with Joseph if he allowed him to be thrown into the pit, then allowed him to be sold, to be sold as a slave? He was sold as a slave and went to Potiphar's house. And what happened was that God was with him. He was. There are some things that happen to us that we are not able to understand, but they are part of God's teachings in our lives. Joseph was then in the hands of Potiphar, but Potiphar was in his hands, and then later Egypt was in his hands, and later his authority was recognized, but those were hard times, and he might have had the same exact, uh, the same thoughts and temptations that we also have, that we sometimes have. But wait a minute, if I belong to God, why are these things happening to me? But am I understanding the word? Am I living according to the word? It is only possible if you are fed from Jesus, even if you are a Christian. If I am a preacher for more than four decades, I may be preaching according to the word of God. But if I don't eat from this word, if it does not sustain me, I'm going to get weak spiritually. And when I am weak, the temptations will defeat me. Sickness will enter and problems will appear. So in other words, if you are falling into temptations, if you are feeling weak, if you are going through difficult times, it is because you are not feeding yourself from Jesus. The Lord was with him, and it also says something here that he was in the house of his master, the Egyptian. He didn't want to do things according to his own purpose. He could have thought, in fact, well, I know the right way. I'm not dumb. Someone has already said that a man, when he walks normally like this without stopping, he arrives in Canaan in 11 days. I don't know if that's true. But he could have given an explanation or made up an excuse that he had to make a trip to another place two, three days, and the master who had adopted him in his house had given everything in his hands, wouldn't even notice if he ran away quickly from there, and he would return to his land, but without his blessing. If God puts you in a situation, stay there. The Lord is my God, and he is going to give me victory. So Joseph remained in the house of his master. Well, if God put me here, this man is my master. I will not become rebellious. He was obedient. Sometimes a person feels like they have a blessing that he should do something great in their life, and he stumbles upon God's operation. He makes hasty decisions by himself. Do not do this. Never rise up against the authority that God has established. After many years, you will see that, that this rebellion of yours was not against the authority. It was against the Lord God and against your own happiness. He was in the Lord's training ground. He stayed there and the hand of God was upon him. And his master saw that the Lord was with him and that the Lord made all he did to prosper in his hand. So Joseph found favor in his sight and served him. Then he made him overseer of his house, and all that he had he put under his authority. Potiphar himself saw that the Lord God was upon Joseph, and his master saw that the Lord was with him. This young man is different. He talks about God, the God of Israel, and this God is with him. And the Lord made all he did to prosper in his hand. So then Potiphar called him and said, Look, I'm going to do this. I'm going to make you an overseer. You are the maximum authority here. You will rule here. And he didn't worry about anything that he did. Take a look at the following verse. 
So it was from the time that he had made him overseer of his house and all that he had that the Lord blessed the Egyptian's house for Joseph's sake. And the blessing of the Lord was on all that he had in the house and in the field. Sometimes a person has the purpose of working for a company or at a job that is almost individual, but that the boss is someone very arrogant. And the person prays, God, take me out of this place. I don't want to be here. Why doesn't he pray, God, use me to transform this person, to change them? Because one life, if you gain one life, Jesus gave us a hint. One life is worth more than all the gold in the world. So if you've never gained anyone, but you gain one person for Jesus, you will become rich for eternity as if you were the richest person on earth here today. This will endure for all of eternity. Those who gain many, many things get serious. The reward only increases. I learned this while I was a boy. I'm going to be this man that God wants me to be. So in this passage, uh, Joseph, so it was from the time that he had made him overseer of his house and all that he had, that the Lord blessed the Egyptian's house. So we should work in a company in order to bless it. Once something happened that scared me, it was very interesting. I got to a city here in the state of Sao Paulo, uh, near the city of Arasatuba, Birigui. And I got to a hotel to stay there. It was already past 11 at night, more or less, almost midnight. The lady said, wait a minute. And she went and called the manager. The manager got there and said, wow, the Lord sent you here tonight because we are here in a, in a tremendous vow. We are all evangelicals here. And I would like you to join us right now in prayer. And he called everyone. What is the reason for this prayer so that the Lord can bless our boss? And I said, but there are people that want their bosses to go bankrupt. Don't say this, Dr. Suarez, or else we may lose our jobs. This man is the one who pays our salary. So we joined our hands there and started praying. It was almost midnight for God to bless their boss. I'd never seen anything like this. They asked for him to prosper. It was just like Joseph. He was there. He reached out. No, I won't put my hands on his things. Wait till it's mine. No, it's now. The blessing of God is never in shortage. It always increases. The more that you give, the more that you will receive. And those who have much will be given even more. If you have given, you'll be given back because God gives you. So Joseph remained doing this. And what happened later on? The Lord blessed the Egyptian's house for Joseph's sake. And the blessing of the Lord was on all that he had in the house and in the field. Wherever his master had any lands, the blessing of God upon Joseph blessed that man as well. If you are someone who works in a company, you can believe this. I am going to give a good testimony. I'm going to be a servant, a servant of the Lord. But I'm going to act in such a way that I don't think only about my selfish interests because I am going to make his things so that all that belongs to his family to prosper. But what if he doesn't recognize it? You are free. You were a servant of God. When I accepted Jesus, I accepted to be a servant. It is the same for me to preach up here or to preach in a very miserable place, as I have already preached. Almost in absolute poverty. For me, this is meaningless. Those people are so much loved, and they must be loved by me and by God, just as anyone else who may be more pleasing or any other kind of person. Well, let's read verse 6 now. Thus he left all that he had in Joseph's hand, and he did not know what he had except for the bread which he ate. Now Joseph was handsome in form and appearance. There's an important message here because right after this, the wife of Potiphar starts to get interested in Joseph. But since Joseph was a man of God, he didn't want anything. If he had a weak mind, as there are many weak minds in the world, well, I can become a boyfriend now and then I will have a pleasing life here. No, he wouldn't do that. It would be a terrible life because he would lose God's anointing. Whomever you may be, be a clean person. Be a servant of God. Never, brethren, never choose any shortcuts. Every shortcut ends in the abyss. The path that leads to God is the holy path, the word of the Lord. It does not matter who you are. If you are oppressed like Joseph was, he stood firm. And then what happened to him? He left that place to become the prime minister of Egypt. He might have left there defeated, but he left there victorious. But the wife of Potiphar remained there. Verse number 7. And it came to pass after these things that his master's wife cast longing eyes on Joseph and said, Lie with me. But he refused and said to his master's wife, 
Look, my master does not know what it is with me in the house, and he has committed all that he has to my hand. There is no one greater in this house than I, nor has he kept back anything from me but you, because you are his wife. How then can I do this great wickedness and sin against God? See how Joseph had a holy mindset. We must have the same mind. My brethren, there should never exist adultery in the mind of a Christian and never in the life of a Christian. Dishonesty as well. We must be holy people at every single moment. Be holy because I am holy. So it was, as she spoke to Joseph day by day, that he did not heed her to lie with her or to be with her. But it happened about this time when Joseph went into the house to do his work and none of the men of the house was inside, that she caught him by the garment saying, Lie with me. But he left his garment in her hand and fled and ran outside. And so it was. When she saw that he had left his garment in her hand and fled outside, that she called to the men of her house and spoke to them, saying, See, he has brought into us a Hebrew to mock us. He came into me to lie with me, and I cried out with a loud voice. And it happened, when he heard that I lifted my voice and cried out, that he left his garment with me and fled and went outside. So she kept his garment with her until his master came home. Then she spoke to him with words like these, saying, The Hebrew servant whom you brought to us came in to me to mock me. So it happened, as I lifted my voice and cried out, that he left his garment with me and fled outside. So it was, when his master heard the words which his wife spoke to him, saying, Your servant did to me after this manner, that his anger was aroused. Then Joseph's master took him and put him into the prison, a place where the king's prisoners were confined. And he was there in the prison. Verse 21 now, But the Lord was with Joseph and showed him mercy. There are two things that we need for the Lord to do in us, that he may be with us and that he may pour upon us that art of doing good. Then, my brethren, the situation will be resolved, but it will be on God's time. He still had some lessons that he had to learn. If he did not learn those lessons, he would never have been successful. And he kept favor in the sight of the keeper of the prison. And the keeper of the prison committed to Joseph's hand all the prisoners who were in the prison. Whatever they did there, it was his doing. Joseph could have even led a rebellion. Look, brethren, I'm going to tell you, I'm here for no reason. I can't stand this any longer. So at this moment, let us stand against this and let us run away in the middle of the night. If you all come with me to my land, you will all be free. No, no, no. He remained firm in that place and everything was in his hands. He was the leader that the keeper of the prison had made. The keeper of the prison did not look into anything that was under Joseph's authority because the Lord was with him. And whatever he did, the Lord made it prosper. Let me tell you something. You who are placed as a manager at your company or someone in an important position, don't do anything wrong. If your followers see your bad example and do something wrong, you will be the guilty one. Jesus said that a person can induce another to fall into adultery. The only way that a divorce is possible is when there's infidelity and the person does not repent, remains lying and such things. In those cases, there may be divorce. But if the person forces very much, some people force a lot, the person who was not, in fact, the adulterer, may become adulterer, and the person who forced the situation is responsible for the other one's fall. So we cannot be the stumbling block for other people. Do whatever is right. If you are a manager, be like a father to, to the other employees. You must treat them with love and kindness, but also with the firmness that the word orients, and always doing the right thing. Because there, Joseph was serving the Lord. In industry, commerce, or wherever you gain your bread, or at your school, if you are a teacher or an educator, you are serving God. 
and you must act in such a way. It cannot be in a different manner, by no means at all. Nothing can make you change, even if you may be tired or stressed. No, you must set this example. And by the end of the year, do your best so that none of your students are flung, and so that all may pass with honor. That is how it should be. You were placed there to be a master, and not a person who does harm to others. Many years later, as I remember some of the teachers that I had in my childhood, and you may remember as well, the children are going to remember and say, one day I met a man or a woman of God. After they are grown up, they'll remember your good example in the same way it should be with a manager, or the doctor, an engineer, or any one of us. And as a member of the church, even more so, because we have been set free to serve the Lord our God. So Joseph had everything in that place. And later, we'll speak another time, he interpreted two dreams of the cupbearer and of the baker. And it happened exactly as he had interpreted. The anointing was upon him, the baker was hung and died, and the cupbreaker forgot about him. And so he spent two more years in prison. But God had not finished with him. When the time came, God made the right thing. Then the cupbearer remembered, and he said to Pharaoh, Oh, please forgive me. I am guilty. There is a man in prison that will be able to interpret your dreams. How do you know? Because he interpreted mine. So Joseph went on to save Egypt and the world at that time. I don't know if God is preparing one of us here to be the salvation for many lives. I believe that all of us are prepared to do this. Let us stand firm in Jesus Christ. Let us not walk behind the fools that are always pleasing others so they can have success. Let us remain as servants, and the day will come when God will give us the crown of righteousness. Jesus himself is going to give it to you. Bow down your heads and close your eyes. God, thank you so much for this service, for this special word today. We have not wasted our time coming here, and no one lost their time watching the program. So now, Father, I want to ask you, Speak to this heart that is not understanding, God. You will give us victory. My God, I am going to bless this person now and rebuke all evil that is in his life. As a minister of the Word of God, I order right now, devil, take everything that is yours and leave right now. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Thank you so much, Lord. Amen.